Hey fantasy fans, welcome back. It's Dan here with Treebeard Book Reviews, and today I'm going to be reviewing the epic of epic fantasy, and that is uh, Brian Lee Durfee's The Five Warrior Angels, The Forgetting Moon, Book One. So uh, let's get into it. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and making it the best it can be. All right, guys. So first thing I want to say about this book is it's awesome. Uh, I'm going to get into the whole breakdown, like kind of what's going on, things I like, things I didn't like, and just a you know, general overall ranking of this book or rating of this book. So uh, first, guys, you know, if you're new to the channel, you know, my name's Dan. I do fantasy book reviews and sci-fi book reviews. And if you like the channel, you know, please like, comment, and subscribe. But let's get into this review. All right. So what's happening in this world? In the world of the five warrior angels. So this this book is set 99 years after the death of Lejon. So Lejon was the original. Uh, I guess he's like their god. The, he's one of the original five warrior angels. And um, the five isles where this is set is waiting for his rebirth on that thousandth year. So Source Sevier is one of the the islands, and it's at war with all the other islands, the four other island nations on the five islands and uh, they are out to conquer the the land and also claim the weapons of the five warrior angels and the angel stones the armies of sorcevier are led i uh, hopefully i'm saying that right uh are led by eros rajail and he is a descendant of rajail who is the son of uh, lejon their the, the the god and mother mia who is i guess the mother um uh, female deity as well so uh, he is a descendant, a thousand years descended from the line of Rajel, the, the line of Lejean, and he is trying to conquer the land and fulfill the prophecies that are stated within the book of Rajel. So a uh, lot of great things going on in this book. All right, so Eros at this time, the beginning of the book, has conquered Aiden White and Windari, and he now has his sights set on Golcana, and he is out to conquer the kingdom of Golcana and uh, raid the capital of Amandon, where which the seat is held by a young king, Jovan Bronichel, who took over after his father was killed uh, in the war against Eros. So that's kind of the political setting that's going on, but this book really starts out with a very powerful prologue that actually really doesn't relate to much of what else is going on in the book till you learn a little bit later. It's really different tonally from the rest of the book, but it's, it's a really great prologue. And then you get into your, your main POV characters of Nail, Jondralin, Tala, and, um, and there's also some other senior characters like Albrecht and stuff like that. One thing, I'm probably going to butcher all these names, but uh, but that's really kind of where the book is at. That's the plot or the general plot idea of what's going on. I just really want to talk about, you know, who is this book for and... Um, you know things i like so who would this book appeal to so this is just epic fantasy it's pure epic fantasy um it's you know brian lee durfee really goes deep with uh, the, the world building the immersion and you know he's just crafting this very full world like you can see like when you look on the map like this is massive like he's put so much work into this into this book and i truly appreciate it and like you know looking at it like there's no way all the characters are going to visit all these like little hamlets and stuff like that but it's awesome like it's just like he's created a full world and when i say you know it's epic fantasy is really in that vein of you know wheel of time um lord of the rings uh you know robin hobb like game of thrones like if you're a fan of any of these series uh even sanderson as well like you're gonna dig this because this is just pure epic fantasy you know you see brian kind of paying homage to uh like the series he's read he seems like a very well-read author i mean i know he's well-read because he also has a, a youtube channel or booktube channel where he does uh book reviews so uh, and I, I do watch him regularly too, so I know he's really well read, and you can really see this love, um, you know, on show, on display in this book and the way he writes. So that's really who this audience for. If you like epic fantasy, you want to kind of get stuck into this world, it's all there. And he does a really good thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention it later in the things I liked that really helps kind of you know just boost this immersion for you as a reader so uh let's kind of go into the things i really liked so again like i said it's it's epic fantasy like if you like epic fantasy you're going to enjoy this book there's all those things that are kind of um you know staples of the like the fan like epic fantasy genre uh you know 
big like full political systems religion a different kind of fantasy races you have dwarves you know humans obviously uh ogles which are kind of like i i pictured as just like kind of like a cross between like an ogre and like a not an orc but like more of like an ogreish type of character a little bit bigger than humans kind of like have tusks and they drink blood and it's kind of cool and then like the vale i think that's how they're pronounced i have no idea again and they're more kind of like elvish like they're very fair like feline like feminine kind of characteristics but very graceful and beautiful so again epic fantasy it's here and uh it's it's so much fun but uh it's also like there's so much thing in here that i like that just work for me in in terms of a book is there's a lot of prophecy i love the prophecy going on because it's a thousand years from the rebirth of their god lejean and the five warrior angels and there's these angel stones and these like powerful weapons that they wielded and there it's just all the things i like you know interventionist gods very powerful kind of weapons and they're out to kind of get those weapons and it's so cool and there's also these five ancient texts that kind of relate to all these um uh you know these weapons and these five warrior angels and it's great how we kind of at the beginning of each chapter there is like you know sections from different parts of each book you know there's like the the commentaries from Ray Jail and like the tr way and truth of Lejean. I'm probably mixing, I'm probably getting them all wrong. And then there's the, the book of Mia and stuff like that. So there's so many things going on and I just really, really love what he's building here. One of the things I want to say that he really kind of does well in this book too is, uh, you know, his, you know, addition of that grim darkness, that reality that he adds to this, this book and these characters. Because a lot of the characters are actually, you know, quite young and they, they you know, they haven't had a lot of horrific things happen in their lives. At least three of the main characters, or the three male POVs, they've been quite sheltered. They've had really sheltered lives and, you know, they haven't had to deal with like war and death and violence. Some characters who are, you know, more seasoned, who are POVs have and, and you know, they bear those scars. But there's really grim, dark realism, I find. There's a lot of... Uh, um, you know, just action and violence and, you know, these younger characters have to change and grow when this, these violent things happen to them and they don't just walk away from it unscathed. Like they have trauma and this is trauma they're going to carry for the rest of their lives. So very well done, very well realized. And I think, you know, Durfee did a great job and this is where it's kind of blending of that, that epic fantasy and that grim dark where, you know, it's got this big beautiful immersive world and then but it's uh, it's a very hyper real world too so it's very similar on like the game of thrones kind of uh, vein i think at least so one of the things i really liked what he did is just just more of this world building where he's you know created his own months of the year and there's different days and different uh, numbers of numbers of days in each month and uh, each month kind of corresponds to a type of moon like the forgetting moon like the cresting moon and the um there's just there's so many they're, they're they're all in the appendix of the book and they're fantastic fantastic so i really like that the immersion he's done there and it just makes it feel like its own real world it's standalone-ish and then also i really want to talk about the politics going on in this book wow there's so much going on with the politics i really liked how you get to see the politics on both sides of sorcevier like which is the baddies and then also on Golcana, which is you know gray they're really you really kind of get to see the the politics going on and the relationships between the, those in power where you have one who is completely in power and you know no one questions his authority because he's seen as a deific like a deity uh, i guess a godlike figure and then you have this other one where you have this really young king who is fighting with his siblings and you know he's kind of dealing with his faith and he's very adamant in his faith and the other characters aren't so it's just a lot going on and uh, it's just seeing how the you know these young characters you know navigate this political situation where you know they aren't seasoned they aren't experienced and that some of them are in positions of power and you know some of them need to be humbled as well too so it's it's very very good so if you like politics and books this is here if you like a lot of good character development this is here this is a book is an investment it's a very big book it's 800 pages you know for some fantasy you know epic fantasy fans that's really like nothing but you know for people wanting to get into the series it can be an investment and this is this is an investment there is a lot here there's a lot of lore politics religions names places uh you're, you're gonna constantly be flipping back to the map to kind of see where stuff is um so as a reader you kind of need to commit to just being immersed in this world not knowing all the answers straight away 
but letting uh, you know Brian Tur- like just take you along for that ride and just kind of soak everything in as much as you can. Sometimes he does uh, overstate some things, but I can see that improving in the next uh, you know a few entries in the series because he's laying this foundation. So this book is really a foundational book. He's laying a lot of that information on you that you need to kind of make this world full and you know feel real so i do really appreciate that but again it's going to be some work from the reader uh to immerse yourself in and commit yourself to the work of enjoying this book uh just some other things i want to say i really liked cover art is awesome i don't know if it's a different cover artist for lonesome crown i'll have to double check that but i really like the cover art i think it's just absolutely fantastic and it's it reminds me of kings of the wild i think it might even be the same artist it probably is if i think about it but now but it's awesome. Love the cover art. Love the cover art for the second book. I've already started the second book. Uh, as you guys can see, I really enjoyed this. And uh, then the, the next thing I want to talk about that I really loved is an appendix. Like, thank goodness. Like, the appendix was awesome. This is always a win in any book that you put this in. So thank you, Brian, for putting this in. It was just great to, like, see the... He gives you, like, a history of, you know, what's happened since the death of Le Jean. Um, you know, characters' age, their details, where they're from, like, what faction they belong to. There's just so much there. The only thing I wish there was is a pronunciation guide, because there are accents, and even though, like, it's written in English, obviously, it's, uh, you know... I have no idea how to pronounce, like, am I saying Sorcevier right? Am I saying Vale right? No idea. But holy cow, is it good? I really appreciate that work there that Brian has done. And, um, you know, I was always kind of flipping back to the back of the book. You know, I was, like, flipping back and forth, like, to the front to look at the map, to the back to, like, look at some of the appendix and index stuff. But, you know, there are a lot of named characters in here. And very appreciate it that this was added. So thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Brian. And I guess, like, the last thing I want to say is I'm kind of jealous. You know, you know, looking at this book, right, this is Brian's first book, and it's awesome. It's really, really well done, re- you know, really well written, way written way better than it has any right to be for a first author. And it just seems like Brian is a polymath, uh, just a general polymath. He, he's got, he's an amazing artist. I don't know if you've seen any of his artwork. If you have, you know, check out his YouTube channel. Cause he, he does, he, I think he's posted a few videos on his artwork, but the guy's, the guy's just a polymath, like amazing writer, fantastic artist, good YouTuber as well. So, um, guy just seems to just, you know, knock everything out of the park. So thank you, Brian absolutely great to see that so uh yeah really fun so let's kind of get into some of the criticisms i have for this book and uh what you know maybe just put me off a little bit all right so some of the things i didn't like so the first thing is there's a little bit too much exposition on the back end of the book Uh, a little bit of repetitiveness where he's kind of saying you need to focus on this as a reader and it just overstated its welcome a little bit and i think it really kind of pulled me out of the story more than it kind of helped because yeah I, I only really needed to be told once especially because you're paying attention to the prophecy and like the five warrior angels and the weapons and the angel stones you're locked in i was locked in so i was like this is cool i'm always kind of thinking about that in the background so sometimes it just overstayed its welcome and it actually kind of broke my immersion a little bit with the characters so i just think it may be a little bit you know as a new reader or sorry a new writer um just a little bit more trust for uh, the reader there but, you know, for some people, if this is your first kind of foray into epic fantasy, you might appreciate that that help. You know, I've read a lot of epic fantasy series, so I didn't need it as much. But I could see that, for like, for me, at that last kind of quarter of the book, it started to drop off for me a little bit there. And it started to lose me with a few of the characters, where some of the characters, uh, especially Nail, who was probably my favorite POV, started to get a little bit whiny near the end of the book. And... Um, it just kind of really broke my immersion, like, and the plot lines kind of just flatlined a little bit near the end of the book. But I will say they kind of picked up, and it, it kind of held that rating for me in the end. So other than that, like, I think the pacing was very well done. I really did enjoy the characters. Uh, this is a minor gripe. I, 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 I'm bringing it up now because I'm even noticing it's the same thing in the second book, and it's probably going to be the same in the third book. Is the font that was chosen for the page numbers it's so minor? I know it's such a minor gripe is I, I don't like it. I don't like the font that was chosen for uh, the numerical numbers because the ones look like sevens and it always kind of just sh- like, I had to like double check. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on page 11, not 17 or like, you know, 111. Not, you know. It was just, it's a, such a minor thing and I know it's probably just a stupid gripe, but I just, 
I didn't like that in the physical copy that the ones look like sevens. But yeah, there's really not a lot of bad here. It just remember, it's it's a lot of this is going to take investment from you. And for me, I'm fully invested. I'm ready to. I've already started the Blackest Heart, reading it right now, and probably by the time this review comes out, I'll be finished that book. And I uh, cannot wait to get onto Lonesome uh, the Lonesome Crown. But Crate First Entry by Brian Lee Durfee. This uh, series, uh, you know, I was looking on, you know, online and the Goodreads and like Amazon reviews, like this is sad, like, you know, sorely under review, like, you know, so if you're a fan of fantasy, a fan of epic fantasy, or you know people who are fans of epic fantasy, share this review, uh, you know, recommend this book series to them. And if you've read uh, The Forgetting Moon, like, what did you think? Like, did you like the series? What were some of your high points, some of your low points? Uh, you know, hit me up in the Discord too. I do have a channel for the Five Warrior Angels on my on my Discord channel. There is a link in the description below. We can chat about it. I'm or you know, I'm already talking about Blackest Heart. I'm in there and kind of going, oh my god, oh my god. So, but uh, no, this is a great book, and I'm really glad Brian wrote it. I can't wait to see you know the next series he writes. I know this series is now complete. It'd be cool if he does something else in the Five Isles. If he doesn't, I'm looking forward to that too. So big win here uh i guess to get to my ranking uh, my rating so i i did rate this a five stars on goodreads i think now on reflection it would probably go down to a four i'm not big on changing reviews on goodreads you know brian giving you the five you deserve it but uh you know for really if it, it would be a four um i say it's like the four 4.25 range so i'd round that down to a four but i'm gonna leave it as a five on there it's fine and then for my own ranking system i'm gonna give this a tree beard seal of approval awesome book highly recommend it going to be one of my favorite books of uh, 2023 i can see that and uh, it's probably going to get beaten out by blackest heart and lonesome crown because I, I just know those are bangers from what i've seen on the reviews on those or those rankings at least where uh you know brian's just improved his craft so anyways guys that's my review of uh the forgetting moon i hope you enjoy it and we'll see you on the next one cheers